This is the GMBN Tech Essentials series, which is our easy to follow guide to understanding your bike and learning how to work on it and maintain it yourself at home. In this particular video, we're looking at how to install a cable operated dropper post, which is a fantastic upgrade for any mountain biker to add to their bike. And they're very easy to fit. Okay, so first up, a little bit about the dropper post. Firstly, why would you want a dropper post on a mountain bike? The simple reason is it enhances your ride. So it won't physically change anything about your bicycle because you can actually drop the seat post manually in the frame. But what it enables is with a flick of a button, you can lower that seat, which means it gets it out the way, meaning you're gonna feel a lot more secure, a lot safer, and you're gonna be able to lower your center of gravity, which is really important when you're riding really fast, rough, technical, and let's face it, some dangerous stuff that can be quite as scary. By lowering that seat out of the way, it means you can get off the back of the bike, it means the saddle is not gonna hit you in the stomach or anywhere else, and it just generally enhances what you get out of your ride. Now, when you're picking a dropper post, there's a few different options on the market. So the first thing you need to know is what size frame have you got? Now, typically they fall into 30.9 millimeters or 31.6 millimeter diameters. Now you can find out the size of your existing seat post by simply removing a post from the frame. And if you look right here on the post, you'll see it has etched into it the actual sizing for this. If you're unsure about this, you can also find out on the manufacturer's website of your bicycle frame. They will generally list the actual frame size, the internal sizing here, as one of the features in the geometry charts and the specifications. The next thing you need to decide is if you're gonna have a hydraulic operated post or a cable operated post. Now for hydraulics, there's not really many options on the market. The RockShox Reverb is the king when it comes to hydraulic terms. But the cable operated post, there are several options on the market. And fundamentally, they work in the same way, although there are two designs within that. Some of them have the cable nipple operated at the post end, and others have them operated at the actual dropper post lever end. Now, the only difference really in operation is it's more of an installation thing. You just have to fit things in a slightly different order, but we'll get into that in a minute. Now, the final thing you need to take into account is how much actual drop your post can have. Now, when they first came out, I think they were about 75 millimeters, which was pretty much standard, but now you can have up to 175 millimeters on some posts. Now, in an ideal world, you want the maximum amount of drop you can possibly have, but it's not just as simple as buying one to fit onto your bike. You need to take into account the length of your seat tube, the amount of exposed seat posts you have, and your inside leg measurement. Now, it's fairly easy to work out how much drop you can get away with because on manufacturer's sites, this one is a Crank Brothers seat post, they will list the height, basically, of every part of that post. So you can figure out how much drop you can fit into this space. Now, just take the time to figure it out for your particular bike. You want the maximum drop you can get. On this particular one, I could get a 175 into here, but I have a 150 mil drop post, which should be more than adequate for this bike, and that's what I'm gonna to install today. Now, before we get started, you're gonna need some kit for the job. Firstly, you're obviously gonna need your nice new shiny dropper post. Next up, you're gonna need suitable cables for it. That means a new inner cable, full length, an outer cable, ferrules and end caps. You're also gonna need a tape measure, some Allen keys, in this particular case, a five, a two, and a three millimeter. You're gonna need a pick or a small screwdriver. I'll show you why later in the video. You'll need some sharp cable cutters, some needle nose pliers, a Sharpie. You'll also need some sort of spray lube or lubricant in order to get inside that outer hosing. And you're gonna need some sort of grease or assembly compound that is compatible with your frame. I also recommend having some thread lock. And if you wanna get a bit more particular about it, a torque wrench would be really helpful. And finally, if you have access to one, an internal routing kit is really, really helpful, though not essential. Now there's no specific order in which you need to do this, but I'm gonna start at the front of the bike with the dropper post remote lever. Now you need to consider how easy your dropper post lever is to use. The beauty of a dropper post is you never really have to break momentum when you're riding a bike in order to get the saddle out of the way when there's a bit of scary or intimidating trail coming up. 
So in order to do that, you need to be able to just literally just loosen your grip and move your thumb. You don't really want to be moving your hand around too much. So play around until you get position that suits you. This is how I like to hang mine under the bars. It's very easy to reach whether I'm sat down on the bike in order to drop the post in the first place, or if I need to get a post up in a hurry when I'm out the saddle, I can still reach it without having to roll my wrist forwards. Just take that into account and get a position that works for you. Now the process for installing the cable on the inside of the frame does vary slightly between frames. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a newfangled carbon fiber frame, it may well have internal channels, which simply means you feed the hosing into the frame at the front and it will pop out in a relevant place. Now, this particular frame does not have that, so I'm probably in the same situation as a lot of you. Now, this is why the park tool is so useful. You simply feed it into the frame, you follow it along with the magnet until it pokes out where you need it to, and then simply, you attach the end of it to your outer hosing and you pull it back through. It's an ingenious system, it's painfully simple how it works. Now with the hosing in place inside the frame, now it's time to cut it to the correct length. You have to do this at this stage, you can't do it clearly when there's an inner cable inside it because you will cut through that as well. This is a pivotal part of fitting the dropper post to your bike and making sure it works correctly, so get this right the first time. Now the first thing you need to do is ensure you have adequate amount of cable at the front here in order to meet with the actual dropper post lever and not be hindered by any movement of the bars. If your bars spin most of the way around, allow for that. You don't want it to be pulling the cable out in the event of a crash. If in doubt, have a little bit more cable. It does mean that it might look a bit more unsightly, but it definitely means it will work in all conditions. And now it's over to the seat post part of the bike where your outer housing will be poking out of the seat tube there. Now, this is where the Sharpie comes in handy. And in fact, it doesn't matter if you've got a Sharpie, a Tipex pen, whatever it is, you need to make a mark on the cable that's completely flush with the top of the frame at this point. Now, once you've made that mark, then you can pull that hose back through. Careful that you don't lose it in the frame at the head tube end, but you need to pull it out because you're gonna to need to make another mark in order to cut it in the correct place. Now with this Crank Brothers seat post, I need to make the second mark at 165 millimeters, and that's where I make my cut, and that makes the outer hosing the correct length. Now the length that you're gonna to need to cut yours to does vary, and it will stipulate this in the manuals, and it, this is why it can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully seeing me do this explains it a lot easier for you. Once you've trimmed down the outer housing, you need to get your fine pick or a screwdriver or whatever sort of implement you have in place of that and just make sure that the inside of the outer housing is not crushed. Make sure the cable can pass through there nice and freely. At this point, I also like to spray a bit of spray lube through there, hold a rag over the other end just to catch any of that mist. You do not want this to go anywhere near your braking surfaces. Now at this point, you need to just be sure of which style of cable operated dropper posts you have. Some of them house the cable nipple at the remote end and they use that to pull the cable and basically operate the system on the end of the dropper post. But in this case, this is a Crank Brothers post, you actually have the nipple housed at this end and then it's clamped at the remote end. So that is important to know because that affects the next stage of installation. Now, just before you put that inner cable in, make sure you get the cable ferrules and put them over the housing on both ends. Cable ferrules are there to keep muck and grime out and keep that lubricant in, and they're also there to stop inner parts of that outer cable migrating, basically moving out from where they shouldn't be. So it basically forms a system. So make sure you do use those because then your outer hosing will last a lot longer. Now, because this particular cable operated dropper post is the crank design, it means the nipple is housed at the bottom of the post. So first step now before putting the post into the frame is to feed the cable through here and the cable nipple actually sits in this blue piece. With the nipple in place, you simply push the piece back into the bottom of the post there and thread on that retaining ring. Now there should be plenty of thread lock on there, so basically screw up tight by hand. You won't need to use a tool on that, just tight by hand is sufficient. And then you're basically ready to get the drop post into the frame. Now at this stage, I recommend using some assembly compound as opposed to a grease on the inside of the seat tube here. And just, you just need a blob on your finger and smear it around. Now assembly compound is essentially grease with particles that float in it to help increase the friction. And that means that the post has less chance of moving, sliding, creaking, anything like that. And it puts less strain on that bolt that you need to hold it in place. 
Just make sure if you have a carbon frame that you're using a particular compound that is carbon safe. This one is carbon safe, but it also means I can use this on alloy frames too. Now you need to push the seat post down into the frame. And if you're smart earlier on, you would have taken note of your saddle height at your optimal height, and you can insert this into the frame at the preferred height to suit that exactly because it's obviously fully extended in this position. So that is simulating your full saddle height. Clamp it up nice and tight. Make sure you don't over clamp it. There will be a torque reading on your actual seat post clamp there. Uh, I do suggest that you obey that because of the fact that it's very easy to strip the bolts out of those or over tighten them. And if you over tighten them, it can actually damage the post and hinder its performance. With your seat post in place and secured, you just want to make sure that the inner cable is nice and taut and then feed it through the remote assembly there. Now look for that tiny little hole there. That is where it needs to go through and there's a little grub screw, a little two millimeter grub screw that holds it in place. Now at this stage, I wouldn't bother cutting the cable just yet. I'm gonna to swap to the back of the bike again and install the saddle first because I just wanna make sure it operates correctly before trimming that inner cable down. So you'll need a five millimeter Allen key to loosen the clamp bolts on there. Now you'll find just by factory spec, those clamp bolts will have some thread lock on there, but it wouldn't do any harm to put additional blob of fresh thread lock on there and get your saddle into your preferred position. And finally, now is the moment of truth, time to just check it's working. So take your bike out the stand, if it's in a stand to start with, and just check the operation. So operate that lever, put your weight on the saddle, and hopefully it will operate sufficiently and it will come back up as planned. And if you are running into problems, it's generally down to having too much or too little tension on there. So have a little tweak with the barrel adjuster on the remote lever and hopefully it should be absolutely perfect for you. Now at this stage, if you haven't needed to pull any more cable through, you've got the green light to trim that cable down. Now trim it quite close to the actual remote so you can tuck it out of the way. And then of course, make sure you put a cable end cap over the end just to stop it fraying. So there we go, that is the basics of setting up and installing a dropper seat post to your bike. Hopefully that's useful for you guys. For a couple more useful videos, click up here on setting up your cockpit. So that might help you with the positioning of the lever if you're a bit unsure of that in relation to your brake levers and the effects it has. And click down here if you wanna click through to our essentials playlist. So that's all the rest of the videos in this series. Now, I hope you guys like this video and I hope it's useful for you. So give us a thumbs up if that's the case. And don't forget to click and subscribe.